Hey Rob, you haven't posted a what I ate today video in quite a long time. What the heck's going on? Gosh man, you're right. I really haven't done one in a long time. I'll do one today. You better get on that thing, man. Okay, 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 settle down. I'm getting on it right now. Except today's what I ate today video is gonna be a little bit different than they were in the past. What's up my friends? Welcome to another video. I'm Rob Stewart and I'm here to help you get your skin and your overall health back on track. You guessed it, in today's video, I'm gonna be bringing you guys a what I ate today video. It has been a really long time, and like I said in the intro, I am gonna be doing this what I ate today video slightly different. Now, for those of you who don't know, I used food and nutrition and diet to heal my gut biome, and then to eventually heal my eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, and rosacea. I've been cured of skin disease for over eight years, and I share my diet so that you guys can get an idea of where to start or what to do in terms of healing yourself. In today's video though specifically, I wanna highlight and really focus on the nuance of why I'm eating what I'm eating because in the past I haven't really gotten into that too much. Generally, I share my foods, I tell you what they are, I share my day, and it's just kind of a nice old little thing. But in today's video, it's gonna be slightly different. At the end of the video, I wanna give you guys a full macro breakdown of what my food intake looks like, calories, how much fat, how much protein, and why. And I'm gonna show you each meal and tell you exactly why I choose those foods for me as an individual and how they keep my skin healthy long term. All right, all right, so I wanna get right into the food because I am gonna get super specific with a lot of things in this video. If along the way you guys have any comments, any questions about what I'm eating or why I'm eating it, throw them down below. I'll do my best to get to all the questions throughout this video. But my meal number one, and this has been kind of a new thing for me over the past six months, is I've been eating breakfast super early. Those of you guys who know my videos have been watching me for a while know that I'm a big fan of intermittent fasting and I generally don't eat until like two o'clock in the afternoon. So this new breakfast thing is for a purpose. It is kind of an experiment and I have to say that I'm ultra surprised at how wonderful I feel actually drastically better from eating breakfast somewhere between six and 10 every single morning. The breakfast I'm about to show you guys today is very straightforward and it's super, super easy. It's scrambled eggs, bacon, and a tiny little piece of brown bread smothered in goat butter. Now, let's get into each food specifically. Eggs, if you guys know me, you know if you're gonna eat eggs, they have to be pastured. And you know that the eczema community is kind of full of crap about a lot of the things that it promotes. The medical medium has really destroyed a lot of people's ideas about how to heal because of his hatred towards eggs. Well, I've worked with over a thousand people and generally pastured egg yolks work amazing for people. You have to understand that through my journey, I've learned for myself that animal fats are the most important nutrient for me and my diet along with animal proteins. They take my skin, my gut biome, and my overall health to the next level. When I eat high fat, high protein from animal foods, my digestion is on absolute point and I feel amazing. Here's the caveat though. I only know this because I've taken the time to thoroughly test every food that I've eat over the course of time. And as you can see, I've gone from vegan to keto to carnivore to now my new iteration of my diet. It's a refinement process. It's a learning experience and you gotta change with what your body needs. So scrambled eggs is number one. I think I had about four of them. The bacon, again, it's pure, uncured. There's no crap on that bacon. It's from Butcher Box. It's absolutely amazing. Protein and fat, it's my favorite stuff right now. So a lot of you guys are probably gonna be like, Rob, what the hell are you doing? You're eating bread? You've told us for so long, don't eat bread. You're not gonna be able to heal when you eat bread. And I, I know this. This little piece of bread for me is a treat but it's a smart treat. Because I've been healed for so long, because my gut biome is so healthy, I can eat a little crap like that here and there whenever I want, as long as it's coming from a semi-clean source. And if you look at that little piece of bread, 
It is tiny and it's smothered in goat butter. So it's basically a fat bomb disguised as a little hunk of bread. Now you'll see throughout my next What I Eat Today videos um, coming up that I am allowing myself to have little quote unquote treats. I know exactly what foods work for me and what foods trigger me. And knowing what foods work for you also know, means that you know kind of the flavors that won't mess you up. So if I stay savory and salty and semi-sweet with my flavors, I tend to be totally fine across the board. So that's breakfast. All of those foods for me have been thoroughly tested. The only one that I would say is not absolutely clean is the bread. And I would say that if you're in the early phases of trying to heal your skin, trying to figure out your diet, trying to overcome skin disease by healing your gut biome, I would avoid bread like the freaking plague. Okay, moving on to my next meal. So my next meal, as you can see, is absolutely delicious looking. And you might be saying, Rob, again, why is your food so shiny? You got some shiny fish, you got some shiny steak, and you got a shiny potato. I'll tell you why, because I smother everything in butter. Like I was saying earlier, me as an individual, I've learned that animal fats are one of the ultimate keys to my hormonal health, body's ability to gain muscle but stay lean. It's the best for my hormones, it's the best for my brain, it helps me sleep the best, and I will say that in the past three years, since I have left being vegan or plant-based, whatever you wanna call it, my skin tone has dramatically shifted for the better. It looks clearer, it has more color, it is more supple, and it is far less dry. It's, a, it's, just, it's just a different type of skin. Let's get into the food. So the biggest question most of you guys will have is, Rob, are you high fat now? Looks like you had a little bread, now you're having potatoes. What's up with your diet? I'll get to that at the end because I'm gonna cover the macros. You're gonna be surprised at what my macros are if you, if you really stay tuned and pay attention. Um, the carbohydrate intake will be a lot lower than you guys think it's gonna be, and I'll just save that for later. But potatoes work for me really well. Fish works for me really well. Steak works for me really well. And the capers really are kind of nothing. So all that is is those foods with tons of goat butter on it and nothing else except a little bit of sea salt. Super straightforward. Now, for those of you who are in the early phases of trying to heal your skin, I have found that with my clients, and I've worked with over a thousand people, is that really it's the easiest path is to start mostly carnivore or start kind of protein fat based because it gives you the least amount of possible trigger foods to start to eat and it makes the kind of refinement process much, much easier. So if I'm thinking about you guys, the people who are in the throes of skin disease and at the beginning trying to heal themselves, I would probably remove the potato and I would focus on the fish, the butter, and the steak. Again, this is for people who are really early in the process. If you've already gone through a process or if you've already tested certain foods and you know that potatoes work for you, by all means, eat your potatoes. Again, you just have to pay attention to your overall macros, which I'll get to at the very end. Um, so that was lunch. I had lunch, I think, around 2 o'clock or 2.30 that day. Um, then I went and played a little bit of golf with my pop, just messed around on the golf course. We had some fun. I came home, I worked out, I did some more work. And then at night, my mom came over and she was like, hey, I made this amazing salad with chicken in it. Now, salads for me are going to be, and here's what it looked like. It was like a chicken Caesar salad. We're watching, watching games, having a good time. And it was really clean. The, the Caesar salad was made with cream, and it was just salad and chicken, little lemon. Um, she might have sprinkled a little Parmesan cheese on there as well, which again, for most people, they think dairy is the root of all evil. But if dairy, especially high quality raw dairy, does you well, it can be one of the most healing foods on the freaking planet. It has been for me. So within this, I will be dead 100% honest with you. Probably the worst meal of the day for me for skin health is a salad. Salads for me don't digest well. 
They don't assimilate well, and they're more of a treat. I really like the way salads taste with a good dressing and some chicken. Super yummy. So for me, what happens if I eat too much salads is it goes right through me. Salads for me, fiber for me in general, is not the nutrient that I need the most of. It's the nutrient that I need the least of. For me, fiber that comes from a very small amount of fruit works really well. Fiber that comes from very specific cooked vegetables can work really well, but most raw vegetables are a total mess for my digestive system. The same can be said for a lot of my clients. Here's the telltale sign. If you're eating a salad and you burp, toot, fart, get bloated, the next day you poop out pure salad or you just have weird poops the next day, most of the time going to the bathroom way too much, you know salad is not helping the process. And here's the thing, is that if you go through an entire day of eating perfectly clean for you as an individual, your customized diet, and then you throw a giant salad on top of everything and your body poops it out whole, it kind of means that your whole entire day of eating has been ruined because it is such a struggle to digest certain foods that it takes so much energy that the process of assimilating those nutrients goes to zero. So. Did I wreck my day by eating this salad? No, this size salad I can handle. It's all about knowing your limits and knowing exactly what works for you. So I can handle this size salad. It's a little bit of a treat. It made me have a little bit of an inflammatory digestional tutti pooty, and my next day's poops weren't the best, but again, I know where I'm at. And I wanted to show you guys a day with a couple of treats for this reason. If I have a day of eating like this, for the next two to five days, I will be absolutely on point perfect. No bread, no salads, no foods that are even in the gray area for me as an individual whatsoever. And I think you guys could learn a lot from that little trick that I do. Life happens, people. You're gonna go out with your friends. You're gonna have parties. You're gonna have social events. You're gonna be hungry someday and not have what you need and you're gonna reach for something that doesn't work for you you're gonna eat it and it's gonna mess you up. What should you do? You don't actually have to do too much, you just have to get right back to the clean eating. If you do a major mess up, let's say you spend Friday, Saturday, and Sunday smashing pizzas, drinking beer, and having vodka tonics with watermelon all day long, you're thrashed come Monday, that's when you might consider doing like a two to three day cleanse, detoxing, really pushing all of that stuff out of your system, and then boom, right back to the healthy eating, right back to the stuff that's gonna heal you. And if you do that, you won't lose as much ground as if you just kind of give up. When you mess up, don't give up and don't use that rationale to start eating crappy for the entire week. Just dust yourself off, try to figure out why you messed up in the first place. There's usually some reason. Maybe you didn't have enough calories and you just were feeling crazy and so you reached for something that you should have had. Maybe you didn't prep and go and get that food haul and fill your fridge up with all the stuff that you should be eating. Maybe you just had a moment of weakness. But it happens, people, and we're all human and you just gotta brush yourself off and get back on track. So back to that last meal, the last bit about my salad is that the cream and the chicken, for me, work absolutely amazing. If you notice all of the dairy products that I use, are either raw or they're super high quality. And again, let me reiterate, I'm not saying that you should be eating what I'm eating to heal yourself. What I'm saying is I've taken the time to figure out my trigger foods, my healing foods, and my macros and calorie needs, and so therefore I have the wiggle room to eat a pretty yummy diet. Okay, so those were my basic simple meals. There was only three meals. Um, I showed you guys what they were. I did eat except for the salad, um, probably double the portions that I showed you guys. I just go two rounds if I feel like it because I'm a hungry boy. I'm a hungry boy. I'm trying to grow. So let's get into the macros of my day, which are absolutely interesting and super, super important to note. Here's where people don't go far enough with their diet. They start to learn about what foods work for them and what foods don't, but then that's it and they go into this place where their fat content and their carbohydrate content is too much balanced. A balanced carbohydrate 
and fat intake can lead to major dysbiosis. So you generally have to have your fat higher and your carbs lower or your fat lower and your carbs higher. What I found personally for myself is that a higher carb diet does not heal me hormonally in any way, shape or form. In fact, it kind of can be a real big issue with many of my biomarkers if I'm too high in carbs. So I lean towards the super high fat end because it feels really good and it works really great for me personally. Let's take a closer look at exactly what my macros are. Okay, first of all, let's just look at my total calories. 3,153 calories for the entire day. Now that's about average for me. I go between 3,000 and 4,000 depending on my daily activity. Today, a little golf, a little workout and work, that's not a super high intensity type of day for movement for me. So my body wanted 3,153 calories, so that's what I gave it. So the side note about calories is that if you're eating way too much calories, you will not heal. But even worse, if you're not eating enough calories, you're gonna lose weight that's not good, you're not gonna feel good, and it's gonna be really hard to heal. More times than not, the people that I work with are undercaloried instead of overcaloried. So if you start like a new diet plan or you're experimenting with your foods, and you're eating super clean, but you're just not sleeping good, your hormones suck, your energy's low, and you got kind of a crappy mood, 99% of the time you're not eating enough calories. And especially if you're doing kind of a carnivore style diet, you have to eat a lot more volume of food than you think. It's really smart to use Chronometer or my fitness pal to calculate it at first so you know exactly where you're at. Let's take a look at my macros though, because my macros today are really good they're right where i like them so as you can see my fat percentage is at 66 percent which is high fat super high fat it's almost in a ketogenic range for me i most likely won't be in keto with this day of eating but that's not my goal my goal is not to be in keto if keto happens great if it doesn't happen whoop de do that's not what i'm trying to do it's more about the flavors the macros and the foods not really about keto for me personally. Let's look at my carbs. My carbs are at 2% of my total diet. I had a potato, a small potato, half of a small potato, and a tiny piece of bread. So with having carbs, bread and potatoes in a single day of eating, I still have my carbs percentage under 2%. So anyone who says that you have to eat zero carbs to be high fat, you really don't. You just have to pay attention to the amount of carbs that you're stuffing in your old mouth. All right, and the protein rounds things out at about 32% of my overall calories. So my macros are 66% fat, 2% carbs, and 32% protein. For me, that's about a perfect of a day as you possibly can have. All right, guys, so there you have it. That's my day of eating. That's why I choose and eat those foods, and that's where my macros are at and why. What I suggest to every single person who's going through the journey of healing eczema, dermatitis, psoriasis, rosacea, leaky gut, through diet, lifestyle cleansing, and detox, is to take your time, especially with the diet part of it. It takes a little bit of effort, it takes a little bit of documenting data, and it takes being super honest with your results and refining from a place of data. If you just copy what I've been eating over the past four or five years or eight years, you most likely won't have any success. What needs to happen is you need to figure out a customized diet plan for yourself and stick to it so that you can refine it and change it over time. That is why I've been able to stay disease-free for so long is because when my biomarkers start to shift, I'm not afraid to experiment and figure out exactly what's wrong and then fix it with new foods or with changing my macros up. It's truly the key to my success long term. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for me today. Thanks so much for watching. I totally appreciate you guys, um, all the support you've given the channel over the years. Remember, leave your comments and questions down below. Smash the like button, subscribe, share, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff. For those of you who are lost, those who need help and are looking to get a hold of me to become one of my skin health clients, there's a link in the description box for a consultation. There's a link in the description box for the three phases workbook, which is the step-by-step -step guide for healing your skin with a customized diet plan. It goes over exactly what you need to do to, to go through the entire process. And also two more links down in the description box that could be major helpful for you. 
if you're eating meat, which hopefully most of you guys are at this point, you gotta source it well. I suggest going to local places, but if you're gonna get it online, Butcher Box. There's a link for Butcher Box down in the description. They are a sponsor for the channel. I eat Butcher Box almost every day. It's a wonderful source of meat. Also, Skinessa. It is the only probiotic I've ever taken. It's the only probiotic I've ever seen actually give results to the skin health community. It's absolutely amazing. I take it every day. My clients take it. It's just the best product on the market. You can find a link for Skinessa down below as well. I wish you guys a lot of luck. Remember, it's a total journey. There is no end game. Of course, you want your skin to be healthy, but even once it's healthy, you still got to pay attention to things. You still got to have a refinement in your diet here and there, and you still got to do the things in life that led you to healing in the first place. So as you can see, though, it's not like um, I'm eating crappy foods. It's not like I'm eating a fruit only diet or just steaks only. I eat some delicious foods on a daily basis and my skin and overall health improves every single year. Much love, you guys. I'll be back with many more videos real soon.